So I met up with the matchmaker. His name is Mike Sanchez. I'm like, how do I do a show? Like, I had no idea. Like, how do I do a You're show? You're still working your nine to five? Yeah, I didn't stop engineering until a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. So I've been juggling both careers for a long time. No sleep, no social life, no so dating. Brooklyn or otherwise. No, nothing. No, yeah, man. Okay. <laughs> um, that's how I got through it. But Can I say, I compliment you because it, it is not apparent that you're doing a nine to five too because you're all in. And it seems like you spend enough time, so uh, it seems like boxing is your only thing. Props to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I, and I know the sacrifice will pay off. You know, I had to really downsize a lot and cut back a lot in my real life, you know, just with expenses and luxuries and shopping and traveling and like all that stopped. And a year and a half ago, I finally decided, you know what, this is my passion. I'm walking away from engineering and I'm going to do this. All in. All in. All in. And people don't, I mean, I cut my cable off uh, at home. I mean, I just made any sacrifice you can think of. No more eating out, cooking at home, you know, living on a budget, like just to make this really happen. Young people, listen up. Listen up. Smart stuff, savvy yeah. stuff. So anyway, back to my show in 2010. So yes. the matchmaker kind of tells me, well, this is what a budget would be. This is how you would do it. And I literally just like, all right, I'm going to do it. I never knew, I never found a sponsor in my life. I started going out and banging on doors and getting sponsors. And I started learning the trick to sponsorship development, what they want to hear, what they want in return. So I don't want to give away the trade secret, but can you say in general sort of what a trick is? What do people want to They want to a return successful? on investment. Okay, so it's pretty easy. Yeah, if they, if they cut you a check, they want a return on investment. And, and so not everyone recognizes what the return should be. Exactly. Should it, should it just be, I say it's your name on the money. air somewhere, or no, is there an, acti There's an activation of like, let me get some people actually buying the product, coming into my restaurant, listening to my show, Absolutely. what have you. Absolutely. Drive to retail, getting people to their website. I mean, they want a return. You know, they want their traffic up. They want people coming through their doors. They want people buying their stuff, consuming their stuff. So I had, you know, learned that. I did my first show, uh, April 8th, 2011. I will never forget that date. The night before, I'm on my living room floor counting pennies, nickels, and dimes to make sure that every fighter was going to get paid that next day and that I was going to cover all the costs. You know, I literally was drinking a cup of coffee a day and maybe a can of tuna fish a day. I mean, I put my life savings into that show. I could have lost my house if that show didn't do good, seriously. Yeah. And it sold out, and it made the news, and it was just like this really big deal. And next thing you know, they put me on the cover of the Phoenix New Times and said I was going to help Arizona return to its boxing glory. And everything took off from there. That's where Raging Babe came from. Who gave the, you the name, the or did Phoenix, you give yourself the, the name? The Phoenix New Times dubbed me the Raging Babe. And I'm like, it's perfect. But... Here again, everyone around me said, you have to change your business name to Raging Babe. You have to be Raging Babe. And again, I don't have an ego. I'm like, for what? I don't, it's not about me. It's about the fighters. It's about the show. It's about the event. It's about the fans. Everybody, Michelle, you have to change your name. You, this has to be it. So finally, a year later, I did. But it took me almost a year to develop a logo, get my trademark, Changed my business name to an LLC under Raging Babe. I mean, I was really kind of against it, but I'm so glad I listened. I did it. It worked. It's its own personality. It, it It's its own life. <laughs> so uh, let me make an admission here. Uh, before I did my due diligence, I didn't know... Uh, is this Gabe Rosado's mom? Is this Gabe Rosado's <laughs> wife? Is this Gabe Rosado's sister? Before I saw a picture. Before I saw a picture. Don't okay. worry about it. Right? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know. Who, who is this person? Uh, because, you know, we jug a lot of information and then sometimes we forget to do the due diligence. But then I figured it out. But uh, do people still, are they still like, uh, oh, Gabe Rosado's wife, how you doing? Yes and no. I mean, for the most part now, we've been working together since 2012. So we got that a lot in the beginning. And then it was... How did Rosado find Rosado? So 2011, I did my shows in Phoenix. And I started really making a name for myself. And I was kind of like everywhere. And uh, I got with Bam Rogers in Philly, who connected me with Russell Pelt. And I started working with them. And he was a Pelt fighter at the time. Okay. And he reached out to me like on Facebook. I was like, yo, we should get up, we should talk, what you're doing, what I'm trying to do. He started fighting on that Ed BC Sports series that Main Events was doing. He had the big fight with Jesus Soto Carras. He needed a little more marketing. He needed sponsorships. And literally, we met one night in Philly, 
And it's funny because all the Phillies were in there, like the old school Phillies, like Darren Dalton walked in and all these guys, John Cruck that we loved, you know, watching growing up. And we're like, oh, God, it was just perfect. And we just came up with a good agreement. Let's give it a try. And I cut my teeth in the business with him. I really learned the ugly, the nasty, the good, the glory with him, the shystiness. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the word, shystiness. Shystiness. So we're not related. We have the same last name, but no. we are, But we are family now, and we've been rocking together since 2012. Leaving out names, perhaps, because we don't want to uh, really get someone so hurt that they firebomb us. But what is uh, an example of standout shystiness that really kind of blew you away early on? You're like, oh, shit, these people are sharks. When he got robbed in the Jay Leon fight, Jay Leon love fight, on the Mayweather Guerrero undercard they opened up the pay-per-view you know Gabe had just fought Golovkin that January made a really big statement just for being a warrior you know and and pretty much fighting blind through that entire fight with you know those gashes over his eyes you know and then the call came in oh Jay Leon Love you know and on pay-per-view and I said take it you'll beat him take we're taking the fight I you know and I said the same thing to Russell Peltz you got to take that fight it was the most heart-wrenching thing. We're and talking shystiness in relation to judging. shitty judging. Yeah, shitty judging. And just, you know, just that was, that was his The rewarding moment. of the house fight. What could have happened for him after that? Like, who knows? And, you know, I'm not knocking Jay Leon Love, but, you know, facts are facts. Gabe won that fight, and it could have catapulted him to bigger and better things. And, unfortunately, he got robbed. It was a hurt piece. That night was tough. See, I'm getting educated now. Michelle and I were talking uh, before we went on air about, you know, both where we come from and such and how it, we, it's apparent we both admit that we're still learning. Mm -hmm. We're always learning. I mean, I've been covering boxing since mid-90s and uh, still I will never consider myself a, a master professor. I'm always learning things, talking to new people, new angles. And uh, that's also something that you say is very important to you. Yes, I still tell people, I've, I've been doing this since 2011, so almost about seven years, and I still tell people, I'm still doing my apprenticeship. I'm still carrying the spit bucket. I'm still learning. I have mentors, and it burns me up when these new people come in and they think they know it all, and they're going to do all these great big things. And I say, who's your mentor? What do you mean? I don't have one. You better get yourself one or you'll be eaten alive and you'll be out of here in a year. You know, and so there, there, you know, there's a little secret in boxing. There's like a three-year rule. You know, if you make it three years, then they'll start taking you serious. But it's still an old good boy system. You know, you got to earn your stripes. You got to do it the hard way. If not, nobody's taking you serious. So I'm still learning. I'm, you know, I'm here on behalf of Russell Peltz this week in New York. You know, I, I'm not getting paid a big fat check to be here. He's my mentor. Yeah. You're going to you're gonna earn, you're going to get money from Peltz, not in the form of money, but in the form of knowledge.